Hey, hey everyone, Dennis K here with Belize Islands Real Estate. Hope you're all doing well today. Hey, listen, I recently went live. We did a live streaming webinar. Uh, we went for two hours and 15 minutes. And we talked about all sorts of things to moving down to Belize as an expat, retiring in Belize, how to get used to your new environment. We talked a lot about investing, Airbnbs, rental income, taxes, all that kind of good stuff. But I realized that most of you don't have two hours and 15 minutes to sit and watch an entire live stream through. And so what we're doing is we're breaking that up into short segments. Some are two or three, five minutes long. Some are 10 to 15 minutes long. And I'm going to be releasing these on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in any of these topics, look at the subject line below. And if you're interested, spend a few minutes and check it out. I think you really find it interesting. And who knows, you might learn something about Belize that you never learned before. So enjoy this snippet of my live stream, and we hope to see you in Belize soon. Uh, Laura and Bruce, you mentioned privatized infrastructure funding, but has the infrastructure been enhanced and developed along with all this rapid development and not just places like Secret Beach, but for local Belizeans in their neighborhood? So local Belizeans, that's a great question, Laura and Bruce. And um, yeah, so, so the answer is the government has no money, period. And so Belizeans in local neighborhoods that count on government funding for things like infrastructure and roads and services and amenities, no, I mean, I'll be very honest with you, They're, they are, um, they don't get access to a lot of that. The property taxes in Belize are very low. Everybody loves this point. Oh, I love paying next to nothing in property taxes in Belize. Well, guess what? Low property taxes for everyone means the government doesn't have much money. Right? How, how do you how do you fund things like infrastructure and roads if it doesn't come from some sort of taxes? Uh, in Belize, the income taxes are extremely low, right? And so if you have low income taxes, low property taxes, no capital gains taxes, everything that makes us North Americans go, wow, this is awesome for us, right? Well, it's not so good for putting in infrastructure and things into local neighborhoods. So has the influx of people affected building costs? Yes, it has. Absolutely. Building costs have gone up. There is uh, building materials now are in very high demand. There is a boom in building. Um, and there, yeah, there is definitely costs are going up. Uh, when buying waterfront uh, or an island, are you able to build a pier and or structure over the water? All right. This is a great question, Sandra. So uh, the laws and regulations on pier building are are managed by the local municipality. So for example, right now in on the island of Ambergris Key, the San Pedro Town Council is the one that issues peer permits. And right now there's a moratorium on east side permits. Now why why would that be? The, there is a there, there's certain scientific studies that have been done that show that the dredging that it needs to take place when building a permit, you know, upsets the sediment and has an effect on the reef. So Belize, again, it is very mindful that the reason why people are coming to the island is for the crystal clear waters, the sea life, the lobster, the conch, the snorkeling, diving, fishing, that they protect that reef. So from time to time, they'll put moratoriums in place. Now, right now, I know for a fact that when you go north on Everest Key, there's long stretches where you can go for miles without seeing a pier. Obviously, you are going to be able to apply for and get a pier permit to access your property, right? So they're not they're not saying no more piers. On the west side, it's a different story. <clears throat> the west side has very, very few piers, but they do try to limit it. They try to space them out. So you don't automatically get a pier on your property just because you own beachfront property, but you can apply for one. Most likely you'll get it if there's not a pier too close to, the, to your property. Uh, now, as far as building over water structures, all right, that's that's completely different because that is now taking it to, oops, taking it to the next level, all right? So there are very strong regulations now on what you can build. So here's the thing, remember guys, you don't actually own the beachfront, right? Beachfront is considered queen's land. So the pier would be yours if you, if you had a pier permit, but that beachfront property is open to the enjoyment and use of enjoyment of anybody uh, anybody who wants to. So um, keep that in mind. But as far as building an overwater bungalow, restaurant, bar, that's that, that takes a lot of hoops to go through. I would not plan on that. Um, but you can see that all over the island. So obviously there, there, there are people getting permits for those. It just takes going down there, investigating, 
pitching your idea, showing how it's going to benefit the area and not detract from it, how it's going to not uh, hurt the wildlife that lives in the area, things like that. All right, so centers that are referring to a small island in the lagoon. Yeah, if you were to find a small island in the lagoon, Sandra, I don't think you're going to have any problem at all building a pier. If you want an overwater structure on that, again, you're just going to have to look at look at the actual property lines. And I, here, here's an example. If you're buying an island uh, in, in, in the lagoon, your island, so to speak, might be a quarter of water anyway. Right, so your, your property pegs might be underwater in a certain area. So obviously you can build over water there or appear there to get out into deeper water. But again, that would be something to work with your developer on or your builder, or maybe someone like Ursel. Ursel would be a great contact to, to, to find that out. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video today. Really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and tune in because we often post several new videos a week, including videos on lifestyle, investing in Belize, new listings, all sorts of good information that you're going to want to know. And also, if you want to hit me up on a live one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, the link is below to just simply buy me a coffee. That's all I ask. One or two coffees, buy one for Steph and I. Let's jump on a Zoom call, talk about your plans for Belize, how we can help make your dreams a reality. All right, thanks a lot. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.